you know, countless pictures that are taken. I, I know for me personally, for us personally, we had our twins. We were in the hospital, and the hospitals have gotten this down. There's a business side to everything, right? And so before we can leave the hospital, we're bombarded with this gal who brings over her cart, her machine, her pictures, everything. And, and right there on the spot, they're trying to sell you these pictures because they know you're emotional. And they know you're not thinking straight. And you're sleep deprived. You've been in there. And so what they do is they say, hey, listen, we can take some pictures. And they got all these beautiful poses. And you are going to sell you these packages. And at that point, you would just about pay anything, right? And so you end up spending a couple of hundred dollars on some pictures that by the time you get home and you get them in the mail and you look at them, you're going, what a dumb idea. Why did I buy these, okay? <laughs> but we still have them. And it is remarkable to look back at our children's babies' pictures. Of course, for our twins, they were pounding 10 ounces when they were born. And so having those pictures, I have a picture of me sticking my hand in their little, whatever you call it, it's a little incubator when they were born. And so uh, I stick my hand in there and I can see that they're really no bigger than my hand. And so I love that picture, just how small they, they were. And, um, but that we have so many pictures. And, you know, and, and uh, how many of you don't have any pictures of you when you're a baby? Yeah, I don't either. Actually, actually, there's one picture of me when I was a baby, and I look like a little girl. Because, they, <laughs> because the older people were fascinated with putting little hats on your head. And, you know, you put a hat on a girl's head, you know? At least that's what I think. And so it's a picture of me as a little girl. And I look at it, and the first time I look at it, I said, who, they asked who that is. I said, I don't know. It's a little girl. No, that's you. What? You know? So anyway, but, uh, you know, but I love baby pictures, and they are amazing. But I kind of was thinking, you know, what did people do before cameras? What did people do all the generations gone by? You know, how did they remember their babies? How did they, how were they able to take pictures of their babies? Of course, the answer is obvious. They took pictures with their eyes. And they, you know, they were able to take pictures with their eyes. And an amazing thing would happen. They would take these pictures. They would print it with their tongue. You know, they would tell these stories of these images that they captured with their eyes. And so people really were accustomed to paying close attention the first time, right? You know what I mean? Now we have cameras, you know, you just, you don't even think you're, psst, you're great, you know, you, psst, you know, you can look at it later and you can examine it and you can remember, and that's pretty cool that we have that. Then you imagine if you didn't have any knowledge of any kind of technology that you'd be able to remember. I mean, you looked carefully and intently at that little baby when it was born. And so we have a, we have a scene here of baby Jesus. I think in the Bible there are a few pictures of the baby Jesus. And we're going to try to take a quick look at them really quick with me, okay? Luke chapter 2, are you with me? Yeah. Verse 22. We'll pick it up right there. <clears throat> Luke 2, verse 22. It says, When the time of purification, according to the law of Moses, has been, has been, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord, and to offer sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. And the parents brought in a child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required. Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of men in Israel 
and to be a great sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asia. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshiped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Baby pictures. There are probably three or four pictures here of Jesus, if you were to read the story here. Great pictures. Not pictures that we can necessarily see today like you know, we would take, photographic pictures, but there are pictures nonetheless. The first picture we get is really of the night of his birth. You know, you look in the Bible and you see Bethlehem, the place where Jesus was born. It really is sort of a one-street town. Not really much going on in Bethlehem. But there is an inn for travelers that come through. The inn probably isn't anything fancy. Probably a place with maybe a little, a couple of rooms around it. Maybe in the middle, there's a stable where the animals were kept. And, uh, or maybe even there's a little cave off to the side where animals were kept. But it's really nothing fancy at all. And now Mary is about to give birth. The time has come for her to give birth. And they can't find even a room for her in this little inn, primitive little inn. Nothing real fancy at all. And so really, the only place she can find is a place kind of among the animals. Not really anything fancy at all. And the, and the place among the animals, well, it's not secluded or anything. So you can even imagine that she even probably gave birth in somewhat of a public kind of way. That there's nothing fancy at all. Nothing really, you know, crazy. You know, nothing really for him to, uh, for them to lay the newborn baby in. No crib or anything like that. They didn't bring anything along. And so all they can find is a little manger to use as a crib. The, t the shepherds are the first to take pictures. The angel says to the shepherds, a child is born. The angels, of course, they don't really know, so they go over and they get the first picture, you might say. The scene that they see is flat out amazing. They had heard what happened, but as they show up, they get this image. As they walk in, they go, you said there's a baby here somewhere? And the scene that they see is one that we, well, we try today to try to paint this picture, right? You'll see all around town, you'll see some churches, they go to great lengths to, well, they, to create the nativity scene. One that people today, they try to remember. Though they weren't there, and there's really not a great deal of specifics about it, so much work is going into trying to recreate this nativity scene. The second picture is one of Jesus. He's just about over a month old. Mary and Joseph, they take him to the temple. It's a special Jewish ritual. The only way I can think of it is it's somewhat like a baby dedication that the law required of them. They bring the baby to the temple. And as they show up, this amazing, amazing photograph is taken. There's this guy, Simeon, this old Simeon, he's standing there. And he grabs the baby and he holds it up. And the Bible said he had been waiting for the consolation of Israel. He's holding this baby up and he's blessing the baby. Oh, I can imagine as a parent, you'd never forget this. In your mind, you go, Ch -ch -ch -ch. what did you say about my baby? You'd be blown away. Simeon's there blessing the baby saying to Mary, I mean, I, I guarantee you, Mary never forgot these words. This baby is bound to cause the falling and rising of men in Israel. And the sword will even pierce your heart. Mary, I guarantee you, she may not have remembered the exact words, although I'm sure she did, but she remembered how she felt when he said it. It was an image that would never leave her. 
he will pierce your soul as well. But that wasn't enough. Then this 84-year-old prophetess named Anna, she comes along. And she is praising God. She's ecstatic. She's excited. She's just, she's just, she's just worshiping God. This is amazing, she's saying. And I guarantee you the parents are going, wow. What just happened? I mean, Jesus' birth is really nothing that extraordinary at all. But now, this scene at the temple of this newborn baby and the impact that they say that this baby will have on the world, oh, I can guarantee you this is an image that will forever be burned or etched. Well, it is in our minds as well. Matthew takes the next picture. The picture taken of Jesus, still very small. Not sure where it happened, you know, where, it, where it's placed, you know, in the timeline here. But this is a fascinating shot as well. Because there's a company of wise men that get word about this baby. A tiny, seamlessly uh, defenseless little baby is being honored by these wise men. Matthew says that these wise men, they heard, they followed the star, they traveled for weeks to see this baby and to bring him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They traveled. Here they are, this picture of these learned men, educated, maybe of means, and there they are, bowing, giving gifts. Men of great wisdom from world, maybe from parts of the world unknown to many. And here they are, bringing gifts, bowing down. The image is, it's, it's incomprehensible. What does this mean? People from around the world will honor our son. Who are you? Why are you here? What, what does this mean? This is amazing. This is a picture, no doubt, that would forever be etched on their hearts and in their minds. This is beyond profound. What they say about him is prophetic. It's an amazing story. It's an amazing scene. It matters not the little things. We don't get the things that we typically get in the birth announcement, you know. How long was the baby? <laughs> How much did the baby weigh? What color were the baby's eyes? What color was the baby's hair? You know, all of those little things. There's really, you know, that, you, you know, when a child is born and everyone stands around and go, oh, he looks just like his mama. And I go, unless you saw mama being born, then how do you know what the baby looks like? You know, the baby looking like his mother. That'd be, that's not many adults that look like babies. You know what I'm saying? But then, you know, but we're all just, when a baby's born, we just all move. We kind of stand around and we just giggle about things that, you know, look at the little toes, you know. <laughs> look at his fingers. They got them all, you know. We're just amazed. We love babies, don't we? <laughs> and we all have that little awkward laughter. We're just laughing about nothing, you know. We're just giddy. We're just excited. We're just, I do it too. You're just excited. The baby's, look at the baby. Look at the little hair, you know. But I can imagine that there's probably not much of that in this scene. There's probably a lot of silence. And there's some amazing photographs being taken. You know, I, I think of it a little bit like graduation. The cool thing about graduation is that you get to see a lot of people taking pictures. And there's one culture, at least, I don't know if this is true always, but the, in the Asian culture, there's almost no laughter when the photographs are being taken. They're like taking pictures. And there's people moving around. And it's quiet. You know? And it's always interesting to watch. And then to look over and to see some Americans. They're like, ah, you come in next. You're <laughs> pretty excited. We're just so happy. You know, we're just like, we graduated, you know? And we're just kind of, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're, we're pretty excited, and you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I always think it's just interesting, you know, just to watch different cultures, you know, and how we do. And I, I imagine this culture being a little bit more, this being a little more quiet, probably because everyone is just marveling. Wow. 
I don't want to forget this. I'm going to hang on to this one for a very long time. I think this is astonishing. And what can we learn from all of these scenes? Well, the first scene tells us this. Though Jesus found in a manger, wrapped really, you know, kind of, I imagine the shepherds and the wise men, as they're kind of traveling to see this baby, Jesus, they're wondering, what will distinguish this baby? How will we know which one is the one? Perhaps they're thinking, maybe he'll have the extravagancy of a king. Maybe that'll be it. We'll walk in, we'll see this extravagant scene. The Savior of the world, it surely is going to be something amazing. And then when they walk in, you know what's distinguishable? Nothing. In fact, God almost says the exact, exact opposite. God says the Savior of the world must be exactly like you. He will be born. They will wrap him in swaddling clothes. They will take this cloth and they will wrap, wound it, they will take a cloth and cover the baby up and then they will take this wrap, this strip, like a bandage, and they will just wrap him up. And so when you walk in, if you walked into the hospital, or in this case, you'd see really a baby that looked like every other baby in the room. There was nothing about his appearance that was really that extravagant. There was nothing that made him more photogenic. He really was just like us. And God says, that's the Savior you need, world. The second thing, the second picture. We can look at the second picture. We can say, wow, it's pretty amazing that even as Jesus comes in, I mean, Simeon and Anna, they are blown away. They're amazed at who he is. Even to that, God says, you know, this Savior, he will really, he will take the breath away. I love that. The scene of Jesus, the shepherds and the angels, the word about Jesus, it doesn't spread by village gossip. The village doesn't get to say, hey, did you hear the Savior was born? Now, what does it say? It says an angel appeared to the shepherd. An angel appeared to the wise men. And they traveled for weeks. The shepherds traveled in, and they saw a scene that was really amazing. If you don't want to find out what's distinguishable about the Lord, that is it. That this ordinary life, this ordinary Jesus, he would be remarkable because angels, because of God, because God touched him, because God brought him into the world. This is what would make him amazing. And then finally, as we close out, the third, the final picture, the one of them bringing gifts. I love that uh, the learned, the wise, I love that all from around the world will be able to see and know. I think as uh, we look at Jesus, I think it is true that though we look in our schools today, and I've been particularly interested to see how our officials, government officials, those that claim to even believe in Jesus, how they have chosen to, well, take the Jesus out of Christmas. It seems religiously offensive to others. Though privately they may say they honor Jesus, publicly they are not willing to take the risk. Hey, listen, no matter what you do, the world will know who he is. The world will know, as Cheryl said, the reason for this season. It's really all about Jesus. And surely as these three wise men travel from wherever they travel in the world, and they bow down, and they bring him their gifts, this will be what the world eventually will have to do. Every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus really is Lord. He is worthy of the honor and praise. He deserves it. And so as we think about this holiday season, let's think about the baby Jesus. Let's think about the pictures that are taken. You know, there really are, there really was no way for them to have cameras. And I, I kind of like I think God intentionally, and the Bible doesn't give us really anything distinguishable, about, distinguishable features about Jesus. About Zacchaeus, we know that he was short, right? About the King Saul, we know that he was a head taller. Even about Elisha, the Bible says Elisha was bald. 
But about Jesus, we really don't get anything. I think, though, that the pictures are forever etched. There, there are so many pictures of Jesus. I mean, you can go, go into any church. You know, if you go around and you see these people, if you just came from another planet, for, perhaps, and you didn't realize anything, you just think, wow, there must be pictures of Jesus in the Bible. Because there are pictures everywhere of what Jesus might look like. And yet the Bible gives us no distinguishing features. And I'm glad he doesn't. I'm glad that God doesn't. But we still have, yet etched in our hearts and in our minds forever, a picture of Jesus. And so hopefully today, you get a little picture of the baby Jesus. And that that's a good uh, image for us to take into the holiday season. Amen? Amen. Let's pray.